Hey everyone, and welcome to another Top 5 Armor 3 Mods of the Month, this time for the month of June 2020. With the summer break having begun, it gives mod makers some time to create some new awesome additions to Armor 3, and this month we've received some really cool modifications once more, including terrains, units, but also some awesome scenarios you and your friends can play together. Before we begin, I would like to ask you to please take a look at my gaming review channel, Kanoa Reviews. You can find the link to that YouTube channel in the description down below. I do reviews for both old and new games, and you can also request certain reviews to be done on that channel. If you like what you see, then please subscribe to the Kanoa Reviews channel, as it will help me out a lot. Thank you. All of the modifications you are about to see can be downloaded from the links that are also to be found in the description down below. Then without further ado, Let's begin with the mods. For the first modification on the list, we have the Taurusk Terrain. Usually, I am more of a fan of the vibrant, tropical, or colorful maps, and Taurusk is none of that. But what it does offer is an amazingly atmospheric map for a survival or even post-apocalyptic scenario. The map is fairly small, 4x4 four four kilometers but is chock full of objects and assets and has a vibe reminiscent of the Stalker games. Therefore, the type of scenarios that you can make with this type of map are quite varied, from a group of scavengers trying to survive the harsh environment to a more classic zombie type of story. Mixing this terrain with something like Ravage where you have hunger, thirst and even radiation to think about works like a charm as does the ability to search for loot. The terrain actually consists of three separate islands, making the ability to have smaller stories take place on each, or having you and your teammates get the assignment to cross over to the other islands somehow. It's just all very bleak and horrible looking, but in the best sense of the word. Therefore I would encourage anyone that is a fan of the Stalker or Metro games to give this one a gander and see if you can come up with some awesome scenarios for this map. Then the next item on the list is the co-op scenario called Night of Nights. With Night of Nights, they refer of course to D-Day during Operation Overlord, and since that happened in June back in 1944, it comes to no surprise that this month we got a bunch of D-Day inspired missions. This one stood out because of the paradrop in Normandy on the night before the beach landings happened. These battles are often not depicted by mod creators, since there are a few hurdles they have to deal with that come with the Arma engine. First and foremost is that Arma can be an incredibly dark game at night, to where it can ruin the fun since it heavily relies on night vision or flashlights in the vanilla game. You can fix this by adjusting the brightness settings, but only works for so much. Another issue is that it's easy to make this mission underwhelming, since in order to convey that D-Day feeling, you need to have a lot of flak and planes in the background. Now this mission unfortunately doesn't feel that epic to the scale that it happened and could definitely use a fixer upper to make the background clutter a bit more epic, but it does offer a very satisfying gameplay experience with you and your friends as you move through the French countryside and need to perform various tasks like setting up beacons and destroying enemy gun positions. It is rather lengthy, but it never feels cheap to where you will get shot from an unknown direction that you didn't see before because it was too dark. All enemies are put in logical areas where you can anticipate them. I would definitely recommend you playing this with friends instead of your own though. Then our third mod for the month is Army Men, a play on the name of Army Men. The Army Men series was of course a very beloved series of games back in the day telling the tale of a war fought between plastic toy armies. I personally never played those games back in the day, but I surely can see the appeal and over the recent years the style and type of game have seen a resurgence with indie titles replicating the same aesthetic and YouTubers like Mighty Mapper bringing army men to games like Man of War Assault Squad 2. And this mod does exactly that for Arma. It gives you several units including infantry and vehicles that pretty much exist out of only one primary color, so you can wage war with these colored factions. Each faction comes with their own respective set of weapons and vehicles adhering to the blue 4, off 4, etc. It's interesting to see if any scenarios will be made with this mod in the coming future 
and I do believe they convey a good feel of plastic, so one can indeed replicate an army men type of battle scenario. What's cool too is that you can have a three-way battle with the different factions, resulting in even more chaos. But what strikes me as the most interesting part of this, and I hope that this will be more expanded upon in future updates, are objects and assets conveying the small scale of the soldiers. Part of what makes army men appealing in my opinion is that you are fighting in everyday environments like a backyard or a living room or kitchen. Simple and everyday objects suddenly become huge obstacles or cover and there are a few giant sized objects also spotted here. It would be awesome to have an Arma 3 map resembling something simple like a backyard or living room and have an epic battle take place there. Then for the next mod, I'm going to highlight something again that wasn't necessarily released this month, but has been getting updates and is worth mentioning to boost awareness. The Aftermath mod brings the Fallout universe to Arma 3 in all its glory. I realize that over the past few years the Fallout name has been a bit tarnished with Fallout 76 being a huge disappointment. But back in the days of Fallout 3, Fallout New Vegas, and in my opinion also the pretty decent Fallout 4, the name and brand Fallout was something to be reckoned with. The cool thing about this mod is that it brings the world of New Vegas in pretty stunning detail to Arma 3, with several towns and cities taken straight from the game. You will, for example, recognize the giant city of New Vegas, or the town that has been built around an abandoned roller coaster. The mod also comes with a ton of models and units, all with unique weapons that adhere to the game's lore. From the Enclave to the Brotherhood, to the Tunnel Snakes or Vault Dwellers, and even Caesar's Horde. The character models all look great and believable, and since the Armor 3 engine actually is more advanced than the one used for New Vegas, the game genuinely looks better if you played with Armor 3. Since the entire map with all its settlements is available, you can easily create awesome roleplay or survival scenarios. The only critique I would have is that most of the Fallout buildings cannot be entered to look for loot. Looking for resources and scavenging is one of the appeals of the Fallout series, and you cannot really do that here unless you put in some armor buildings in manually. But other than that, it is a stellar mod that still gets updated regularly, so grab a Pip-Boy and start exploring. For the final mod of the month, we will take a look at Fata Tunnels. Over the last couple of months, various modders and creators have tried to introduce tunnels, caves, and metro systems to the Arma 3 engine. Often these consist of smaller templates or pieces that you need to manually place together in the editor to make something coherent. The end result can often be very nice to look at, but also quite a hassle to properly function with AI. The Armor 3 AI often does not recognize these areas as proper caves and will either spot the player through the wall or walk right through objects and walls themselves. Thus if you want to make a scenario that is worth playing, one might have to force the AI to stop from moving, only being able to aim from a fixed position. And for that, it does a pretty decent job. The Baron Cave system, tunnels and rooms do a good enough job to where you can emulate something of a tunnel system where you can have one or two missions play out. The onset of this mod is something in the Middle East, but I would recommend maybe trying to be a bit more creative and also see if something like a Viet Cong tunnel complex can be made. Those tunnels were often a lot more cramped and claustrophobic, but beggars cannot be choosers when it comes to Armor 3 modding. You will need to put in the props and assets manually, and the mod does come with a few presets, but they don't vary that much, so I would recommend getting a bit creative with this. And with that, we've come to another end of this month's top 5 armor mods. I hope there will be some nice additions in this month's video for you to check out. Though many will go on vacation in July, I'm sure we can expect some really cool new additions in the next month as well to have us continue to play Arma during those cool summer evenings. Don't forget to let me know if any mod comes up on the workshop that piques your interest and makes you think is worth checking out for this monthly show. Please also check out my Kanoa Reviews YouTube channel for various gaming reviews, and thank you all for watching. I will see you all next month.